Good evening. My name's Sean, um, and I run a WordPress agency here in Singapore called Chili Bin Web Design. Um, also one of the co-organizers of the meetups here, so I've spoken a few times on bits and pieces before. So we're just kind of going to run through a very basic setup of, of setting up WooCommerce, installing some demo products, and um, and some things like that. So pretty um, pretty elementary stuff, but um, hopefully we can uh, teach someone something. Um, so at the moment, um, WooCommerce can handle both physical and digital products, and that's obviously spelt wrong, but. Um, has over 53 million downloads and powers over 28% 20 of all online stores. So it's a pretty big provider uh, in that market. And WooCommerce, just like any other plugin, is really easy to install um, into your WordPress site. So that means that I now need to switch out of this and into my demo, which is here. Are going on the other that way. All right, here we go. Actually, maybe I'll just. Um, there are these ones now. All right, so I've just set up a basic um, WooCommerce test install um, on my demo server, and I've uh, just gone through and I've actually downloaded it already, but if you just come through to your um, plugins section in the back end, like you would add any other plugin, and search for WooCommerce, it'll come up here and then you can just activate it. So we'll just run through the, the demo install that it does. So once you come through here, um, you can set up these, um, just the setup block. And you can see down here as well that I have Gutenberg installed, so you can install this Gutenberg plugin uh, products block as well. Um, so it's not in an SSL connection, but that's fine because that's just locally. So if we run through this, right, our store is based in Singapore, and we accept payments in Singapore dollars, and I'll be selling physical products, uh, not in person though and they can track me, that's fine. Uh, right, so as you come through here, the next setup is essentially your payment processes. So by default, it will install to Stripe and PayPal, and there's some other offline payment methods as well, like if you're accepting via check or bank transfers or anything like that. So those are off by default. Um, and you can also set up a new Stripe account directly for you, which is really handy and the same with PayPal as well. But at the moment, we'll just go through these, um, these and it will install these plugins.
So at the moment, as you can see, it's you know it's based on a blog uh, blog theme. But what we can do is customize that later. So we will create a home page using that template, and there's a very basic home page there. So we'll just publish that. exit out of the customizer. So now that that's complete, um, this will give you a few more extensions and things, but what we'll do is we'll just go through and check out some products that have been added into the system. Uh, won't worry about that. So if we look here, and this is the basic setup that you have of WooCommerce, you have the product name here, you have the featured image in this column, you have the SKU, which is your product code, um, if the product is in stock, you have different pricing and categories, tags, and whether or not it's featured. So if we look into the sunglasses product and see that there's a bit of a description for that product here, the, it's a simple product. That just means that there's no variations on that product. It's just um, what you see is what you get essentially. There's no variations in terms of size. So if you're buying these sunglasses, there's only one variation of that pair. You can't buy a red pair. Um, and this, you would have to change that to a variable product and then edit that. So at the moment, we're set for a regular price here of $90 for the sunglasses. But if you decided that you wanted to have a sale for this weekend, you could change this, um, let's just say for this Saturday and Sunday, you could do a sale for $50, for example, and then that product would then be on sale for that specific time period. Um, inventory at the moment is just managed, um, managed in here, but you can individually manage your stock as well. Um, so without this checkbox, it's either in stock or it's out of stock, but you can also do and do, you know, a hundred products. You can link this with an inventory system as well. Um, but essentially, yeah, every time someone buys a product, it, it would then just minus one from that number. And in the settings, you can set that to show, you know, if there's 10 left to set a reminder for you to go and purchase more product from your supplier. Um, shipping rates, um, if you're using a shipping plugin that needs a centimeter, a length, a width for any type of boxing, then you can set that per product in here, or you can set per shipping classes per products as well. You may have a product that is only, uh, only free shipping, or you may have a product, let's say for example, this product weighs 45 kilos, you may have a specific shipping class that's for that specific product. Um, you can also do upsells and cross-sells. So if I want to uh, upsell this to a t-shirt, uh, I could then do that, or I can do a cross-sell for that as well. And then we have some attributes which are used uh, mainly for variation variable products, but you can add color and size in here as well. This, this is just information and it won't change the, um, it won't change the specific price, but it just shows that information. And then you have some advanced purchase notes and things. If you want, you can have this purchase note appear on an email that goes out to the customer once they purchase. Um, and you can also have it as part of the invoice. Um, and then we have another description down the bottom. So there's both a short description and then there's a main description and I'll show you in a new tab what that looks like, depending on your theme obviously. But in this design here, we have the simple product and this is the short description. And then you have down below, you have this would be the, um, the detailed description. The additional information that we set up before for the attributes is shown here as well. And then we have reviews uh, just in here. These are just turned on or turned off. And so that's where they're in there. If you have a look at other data that we have across here in the breadcrumb, this information is just across here on the right hand side. So you have, you know, normal categories, accessories, and you can add new categories. So pretty standard um, WordPress stuff in there. So that's a simple product and so I think what ones they have. Okay. Trying to find 
find a variable product. All right, let's set up a variable product um, since we don't have one in here. So for this variable product, we're selling a hat. Uh, the picture is of a yellow hat, but we'll go through here and we'll set up some attributes. One will be color. So if we look into these color attributes, you can put here use for variations. And we'll say, okay, so we have these variations of each of the hats and we'll also add another attribute of size. Um, although, you know, hats are usually one size fits all. For this example, we will just make both of these. Um, these settings. So if we go into variations, you can see here that um, WooCommerce will allow you to automatically create all attributes from each of the, or create variations from each of the attributes, but you can also set it one by one as well. So if I go in here, it will create 50 per run, which is fine. So it will then create the 15 variations. So the blue large, the blue medium, and blue small. And what you can do is then you, if you have different prices for each of these products or different stock information, different photos, essentially it just sets them up as specific products as well. So you can set all that up um, really simply as well as you know your parent information. So all of this information can also be set up in a CSV if it's uh, organized correctly. So you can go through and uh, yeah, you can go through and automatically pull all that information into your product. So we'll go through and save that and just have a look at what it looks like on the front end. Okay, so it's out of stock. Variation. Set stock, full stock. <coughs> Play medium in stock. That's weird. not sure why that's happening but essentially what you'll get here is if it is working you'll get a drop down box that allows you to select information uh, one live example while we're here is because I'm a Kiwi we will show this but this is a WooCommerce store as well so if we're looking at variations the variations would essentially look like this, so they have their size variations, and these are the only ones that are left. So you have XXL or XL, um, so it essentially show your in stock or out of stock there. So you can either show that to the end user, or you can, um, you can hide that information. So you can say that there's five left, there's 10 left, and then you can add through that to the cart. So that's what will, will appear here if this is working but I won't troubleshoot that for now. So that's the real basics of kind of adding and setting up products. Um, as an end user, the next thing, you know, that obviously you want to do is to make sure that you can get paid. So that information is then sent through to your cart. The user will go through and proceed to the checkout and then make payment. So what you can do is set up your payment processes. So generally, I like to work with Stripe because they're essentially transparent to the user. But if we look in here, um, these are the WooCommerce options. So WooCommerce and settings. You can find your address and this is your local uh, variation. So your local store location and then what countries you want to be selling to. So if you just want to store and ship to local in Singapore, then you can set these settings here. If you want to enable GST, you can do that as well through that. And as also if you want to enable coupon codes, you can do that. Um, your currency connections are here as well. 
these are some sort of very basic plugin uh, product options as well. So what your main shop page will be. So if we're looking at the front end of the page, we have a shop here. And this is just the product grid that you have. So you have you know, all your products here. So what the main store um, will be. Let's have a look, this hoodie. Okay, so this is a variable product. As you can see, you've got the color and yes or no logo. So it's changed the description and changed the product as well. Um, some very basic settings in here. If you want to enable reviews or do not enable reviews, star ratings and things like that. Um, your inventory settings across the whole store are here as well. If you want to enable shop, uh, stock management, hold stock for X amount of time. Um, and then what you want to do if you have low stock, so if a stock is under 20, for example, then it will send me an email. Then it will hide that information. So I never want to show this information, for example. So never show the quantity remaining, just to show whether or not it's in and out of stock. For shipping, you can set up different shipping zones and shipping options and also shipping classes. So it can be a little bit complicated, but shipping zones are essentially your worldwide locations that people would be in. Your shipping options um, are how we get that information sorted out. And then you have shipping classes. So these would be your, you know, if you're shipping with DHL, it's a shipping class. If you've got free shipping, it's a shipping class. So let's look at Singapore, for example. Singapore there, uh, Singapore shipping, oh, sorry, sorry, not cool. For that local delivery, and then you can, you know, describe that service, so save that shipping class. And then, and then you can, yeah, save that in there. And then you have different shipping options in here as well. So shipping methods is what I was trying to get to, so Yes, so we have shipping methods. So you can do flat rate in here and you can also do uh, local pickup, uh, but we'll do flat rate, another flat rate. This, oh, this flat rate here will be, the cost will be $20 and that will be taxable. You can also charge this on per order or per class. So there's a few options that you can set in there as well. Next is probably the most important one is setting up your, your payment options. So what you'll need to do is if you do have Stripe or PayPal, is you have to go through the, the options and setting these up here. But essentially it means you go through the settings page and set up your API keys and you'll get that from, from your Stripe account or your PayPal account. So you'll go through here and there's some options. So at the moment you just have to add this information into your Stripe account settings. Uh, and then you grab the publishable and the secret key. There's a couple other options down here is if you want to enable the Stripe checkout um, and debugging and enabled uh, payment for save cards so people can purchase again. Some basic options around accounts and privacy for GDPR information as well. So allow them to log in or log out. Um, using accounts, so allow them to log in to an existing account during check-in, check-out, rather than, you know, signing up for a new account or having to sign in first, and allowing customers to create an account during checkout and on the My Account page as well. These are GDPR options, so if they delete their information, um, request to delete their information, then you can remove that from them as well. It also links to your privacy policy and your personal data retention, so how long we want to keep this information once they've asked us, um, or once it's no longer re needed for processing, which is a good thing to have. You can also customize the emails that go out. So this is the email that goes out for a new order to the customer, and you can quickly view this template uh, in here. I thought it gave you a, a view of that as well. It obviously doesn't anymore. But yeah, you can customize this using some, some PHP or there's a couple of plugins that you can install to do this as well. We won't go through any of that. And there's some advanced settings in there. What, what is your cart page, your checkout page, terms and conditions page as well, which was set as the privacy policy. So once people are going through the checkout process here, uh, add to cart, uh, where's my checkout, view cart. 
If I go down to my checkout, you'll see that there's a checkbox down here to agree to the terms and conditions. So by setting that page here in the WooCommerce settings, it allows you to do that. The other thing is um, going through this, I can't do it without the API, but if you go through and connect the MailChimp settings here, it will do the same thing for you. On the checkout, there'll be a little checkbox here which enables people to get connected to your MailChimp account. Um, so by putting an API key in here, it will connect to your MailChimp account, ask what list you want to be connected to, and then it will feed any new order, um, all those people directly to your MailChimp list. So that's the very basics of, of setting it up. I mean, it's pretty extendable. You can go through here with commerce extensions, and there's plenty of other plugins, subscriptions, bookings, memberships. Um, you know, you can do more advanced things with it as well. But as a very basic setup, that's what we've we've done here. So it's easy to get started and once you connect your woocommerce.com or your wordpress.com account to it as well um, all your licenses will be connected as well so if you are purchasing the subscriptions or bookings plugins they will all be connected up as well um, or any of these other ones there are some free plugins and there's plenty in the in the repository as well just if you wanted to go through and have a look uh, am i looking Plugins. So plenty of options there. Um, this WooCommerce PDF and invoices and packing slips is a pretty good one. <coughs> and there's plenty of other ones there as well. Uh, just depending on your needs. Um, this variation swatches isn't too bad as well. What happens if you choose this one is that instead of getting the variation, the variable product that we have before here, which, oops, not this one, the variable product that we have here, it will have swatches. So instead of being a drop down, what it will do is show you, show you swatches for each of these products. So it just looks a little bit nicer in terms of the design. I think there's some more screenshots in here. Yeah, so I'll show you color variations like this rather than um, a drop down box, which can be quite nice as well. But yeah, there's plenty um, of free plugins that you can do there. So import and export of things. So I won't go into too much more of that. Um, I'll kind of take over for a couple of questions and then we'll go on to the next. The next talk, if anyone has any. Yeah. Yeah, and question about uh, WooCommerce against the other uh, e-commerce platforms. So we've seen the rise of uh, Shopify lately. Um, I saw that the, on the website of WooCommerce, they say insist on the fact that they are customizable. So is it still relevant to use WooCommerce when, when Shopify is there? Yeah, the, in my example, so I run an agency here and we do a little bit of Shopify work, but the majority of the work we do here is in WooCommerce as well. Um, main reason that I like using this is that it is extendable. Like Shopify is to a degree, but you're still tied into that platform. With this and having an open source PHP library, you can essentially do anything you want on top of it. Whereas with Shopify, you kind of just tied in to either building a specific application uh, as an extension on that platform or um, using workarounds. So for example, uh, something like wine shops doesn't work very well because we have some issues with variations on products and things in there. Um, and things like subscription services I've had issues with um, in Shopify as well. Whereas this, we've built a few um, different uh, subscription services that are built on top of WooCommerce. So that's, that's the biggest platform. I think, look, if you're already running a WordPress site for 90% of your other business and you just want to add some products on, there's no point in going and getting additional service for it. If you're starting from scratch, it really depends on your brief and what you hope to achieve out of it. Um, but you can get this up and running for free, essentially, whereas Shopify, you're paying uh, yeah, 20 bucks a month.
Yeah, once you get it st extended. And they take also take a uh, percentage of the, the sales as well. Um, as an example, I'll show. This is one we built uh, probably three years ago now. Um, so this is a subscription coffee business that we built. So initially we built it on WooCommerce um, and it still kind of mostly is on WooCommerce, but we've transitioned it to our own API. Um, and so you go through here, uh, actually we'll get out of that, we'll just show you the main products because everything's based in there. Um, yeah, so all pretty standard stuff. We can go through the products. Um, and do variations on all those products as well. So this is a bit more customizable, and then you can either sign up um, to do this through a subscription service. Uh, we're not using WooCommerce subscriptions for this. We've built our own uh, API using Stripe, but the standard delivery, uh, standard kind of mechanism is still WooCommerce uh, in here, but it's heavily customized for our client. So. All right, cool. That's it. I will hand over.